Hey, folks. Today we're going to do something pretty interesting. I have made previous videos showing where I have come up with a new method for reducing salt and reducing fluid in my ferments over the fermenting time. I've done a previous video where I showed one, but today live for the first time, I'm going to open one that has gone through that fermenting process, but it's been sitting for months in the cooling refrigerator. So let's go. We're going to take a look, see if my new process works, good or bad, you're going to see it. Hey folks, this is Phil from Alabama Hot Sauce. That's alabamahotsauce.com on the web. Today we're going to take a look at something and you're going to be seeing it for the first time that I see it. So we're going to see this together. It's either going to be good or bad. I don't know which it's going to be. I have an idea. I expect it to be good, but we're going to find out. Several months ago, I made a video about a new technique that I started using on some of my ferments. And that technique is very simple. I oftentimes use a much higher salt content in my mash ferments than many do. I use that for a number of reasons, partly to control the speed of the fermentation for various reasons associated with recipe, partly control to control the um, the, how quick the environment gets colored or, or adjusted to cut down on pathogens. But in any event, that process involves removing moisture as the ferment pr proceeds. As you know, you've heard me talk about, I inspect every one of my ferments on either a weekly or every two weekly, two week basis depending on what it is. I take them out, I taste them, I, ch I check the pH, I check the consistency, I uh, check the appearance, I check for, for, for growth on the ferment. And I do this as a method of assuring that that ferment's moving along like it should because some ferments take a while. I certainly don't want to arrive at my production date for salts and realize that something's gone wrong two months earlier in the fermentation process and I can no longer use my pepper. Now, what I've added to that is, in an effort to reduce the saline content and to make much, much firmer, drier mash, fermented mash, I have been draining about 80% of all the liquid that's freestanding in the ferment each time I inspect it. What that leaves is it leaves a very, very wet, match, but a match that is not simply drowning in water or in fluid. I do all vacuum ferments. I'm not concerned about anything growing on. But what I have not done until today in the five times I've used this technique is I've not let a mash sit for a long time after going through this three or four or six week process where I inspect and drain, inspect and drain. This is my first one. I pulled this mash out of the, the cooling refrigerator. It had been in there slightly over six months. The reason it had been in there is that the sauce that I needed the pepper for did not need to go into production at the time. I thought I made a, I made a mistake on inventory. I had plenty of that sauce. So I used that production time to make a different, different sauce and I just left this in the refrigerator. What we're gonna see is what impact has sitting for six months had on this nice mash when it was not completely saturated in, in fluid. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna see what it looks like. This one I think actually got a little bit of vacuum still left in it because of how tight the top is. Oh, I don't think you heard it. Wow. All right, there's the top remaining. 
Oh, the first thing I can tell you is number one, it looks fabulous. This stuff looks great. I mean, I'm like uh, shocked here. Let's go in and take a look at this. Look at this beautiful permanent match. Oh man, guys, this smells absolutely amazing. There is no standing fluid in this. Unless you poke it down and get some. But it's very little standing fluid. You can see there's much, not much dripping when you take that out. This stuff is beautiful. Now, let me show you something else you'll notice. Every now and then you see a stem in this match. That is uh, in keeping with my new practice where I do not de-stem peppers unless they are jalapenos or the peppers with the wooded stems. This particular one is Serrano. Serrano does not have a wooded stem. This is mixed Serrano's. It was a uh, sort of an end of season harvest. It was harvested, I think, in, well, no, middle of the season, actually. Harvested in July, I believe. I put them up the front end immediately when they were harvested. And this is a mixture of red and green and some colored in between there. But I will tell you, this from it smells wonderful. The texture of it is exactly what I want. I, I do not typically add a tremendous amount of the salt brine, which is now saturated in lactic acid, that comes out of the end of one of these ferments. The reason I don't do it is I think the taste is just too salty and it's too overwhelming. I prefer to have control over the vast majority of the liquid that goes into my sauces. So producing a very dry mass is very important to me. Even at that, I still drain it before I scoop it out and put it in uh, my operation for blending. So even with this, this mash here that's dry, there's some fluid in it. But this stuff is absolutely beautiful. I can tell by smelling it. I have not uh, ground some, any of the pepper to do a, a pH test. I'm not going to do that on video. I can tell by smelling it, by the aroma that's coming out of it, that this stuff is very, very acid. I'm going to take a guess and say this is going to be down into 3.2, maybe even as low as 2.8. In any event, what I'll do is I will put, so after I publish this video, I'll go down as soon as I, I begin drawing this and doing the testing. I'll go down and put in the comments of this video what the pH actually is. If I get the pH reading before I publish the video, I put it in a little uh, box somewhere in the video so you'll know. But I can tell it's going it's to be very, very acidic. It's wonderful. I can't wait to uh, taste this stuff. This is these are primo, primo uh, cayenne peppers. I said Serrano earlier. I meant cayenne peppers. These are primo cayenne peppers. So this is going to make an absolutely wonderful sauce. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I think before I get out of here and close this baby up, I'm going to take something some of you have seen me take before. That is what I call a blender's share. And the blender's share is simply... Uh, A little bit of it I take home with me and use it to do I'll call special projects. There you go. There's the blender share of this wonderful uh, ferment. God, it's great. I have a good idea this is going to end up being a relic. But in any event, I'm going to use it for some projects at home. So folks, anyway, I hope you enjoy this live opening of this six month ferment. Like I said, spent six months in the refrigerator. I brought it out uh, nearly a week ago, let it come up to room temperature because our refrigerator is, is 
right on 34 degrees. So I let it come up to room temperature. What I see in here is a wonderful fermented peppers. I can't imagine what an individual could do to ferment them better than this, to make it any better than this. Like I say, I know it's gonna be very acid because of the smell. It has a wonderful, very pungent hot aroma. Top quality peppers, top quality fermenting. And that's the way it goes. Folks, I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'd greatly appreciate it if before you leave, if you would take a moment to subscribe to my channel. If you do that, that tells YouTube you like my content. It tells other people that many folks like my content. The more subscribers, the better. In addition to that, if you like the content, give me a thumbs up. That kind of interaction, the thumbs up, subscribing, commenting, those things tell YouTube that you as viewers think enough of this video to engage with it. And of course, while you're here, after subscribing, ring that bell. If you ring that bell, YouTube will notify you every time I produce new content. You'll get a chance to watch it right up front. You'll get a chance to make your comments before most people get to it. And I'll appreciate it a great deal if you do that. Folks, once again, thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Hey, folks, thank you for joining me. If you would, push the logo on the screen and subscribe to our channel. In addition, I've made a couple of video suggestions that I think you might enjoy. Press the links and give them a try. Again, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.